When it comes to kitchen skills, I need all the help that I can get. So the question is, is that $20 toaster just as good as the one that cost $330? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which toasters do the best job at toasting bread. We'll also see which brands do the best job at thawing frozen bread and then toasting bagels. We'll also see which toasters do the best job at collecting breadcrumbs. At a price of $23, the least expensive toaster we'll be testing is made by Bella. This is an extremely popular toaster with 10,000 units selling in the last 30 days. Extra wide slots and removable crumb tray. Includes six browning options, auto shut off, and reheat function. The Bella toaster is made in China. Weight is sometimes an indicator of quality and the Bella weighs 920. 22 grams. More watts means that the toaster creates more heat. And the Bella is rated for 750 watts and it did a little bit better than its rating at 766. Let's compare the performance of the toasters using two pieces of white bread. I'll weigh the bread before and after toasting the bread to compare moisture loss. I've already done some experimenting with the toaster to find the right shade setting. The toaster is set to 3.5 and the Bella is finished with the bread in 2 minutes and 10 seconds. The Bella darkened the top area of the toast more than the bottom. Also, one side of the toast is darker than the other. And the results are consistent for both pieces of toast. And the bread has lost 17.4% of its weight. And the price of $24 is this Proctor Silex brand. It's a very popular toaster with about 5,000 in sales every 30 days. It has cool touch walls and shade selector. The toaster is rated for 700 watts. The Proctor Silex is made in China. And the Proctor Silex weighs 1,040 grams. And the Proctor Silex is rated for 700 watts and performed a little bit better than its rating at 732. And the Proctor Silex took very close to the same amount of time to toast the bread as the Bella at 2 minutes and 16 seconds. It's a little bit darker on top and it's light in the middle and at the very bottom. One side of the toast is clearly more toasted than the other side. There's a 17.8% decrease in moisture. At a price of around $25 is this Black & Decker brand. It claims it can deliver 850 watts for fast toasting with precise results. Press the frozen or bagel buttons and the toaster will automatically adjust to provide the ideal results. The Black & Decker is made in China and it's 1,204 grams for the Black & Decker. The Black & Decker delivers the most energy yet at 890 watts or about 40 watts more than its rating. And the Black & Decker is 2 seconds faster than the Proctor Silex at 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Just like the Proctor Silex, one side is darker than the other. Also, parts of the bread appear under toasted on the sides and bottom. And the Black & Decker is down 18.4% in weight, the most yet. At a price of around $29 is this Amazon Basics brand. The lever has extra lift for safely removing smaller pieces. It has 6 shade settings to accommodate individual preferences. The Amazon Basics is made in China. And the Amazon Amazon Basics is right at 1,000 grams. And the Amazon Basics is rated for 900 watts and is the most powerful toaster yet at 915. And the Amazon Basics is finished toasting the bread in 2 minutes and 27 seconds. The toaster did a near perfect job on one side of the toast, but the other side is over toasted in some areas. And the Amazon Basics is down about 21.5% in weight, the most yet. At a price of around $30 is this Cuisinart brand, designed for toasting bagels and toast. It has a preheat, defrost, and council option. Inch and a half wide toasting slots and seven setting shade dial. The Cuisinart is made in China. And the Cuisinart weighs 1,146 grams. And the Cuisinart is rated for 900 watts just like the Amazon Basics, but it's even more powerful than the Amazon Basics at around 940 watts. And the Cuisinart is the most powerful toaster yet, and it's also the fastest yet at just over two minutes. And the Cuisinart over toasted one side of the bread quite a bit more than the other. Also, the Cuisinart just didn't do a very consistent job at toasting. The Cuisinart toast is down in weight by 19.1%. Also at a price of around $30 is this Hometer brand. It claims to be a best rated prime display smart toaster. It has an LCD digital countdown timer. Four basic functions include reheat, cancel, defrost, and bagel. The toaster is rated for 900 watts. The Hometer is made in China and it's 1,038 grams for the Hometer. And the Hometer made it to around 906 watts, which is very close to its 900 watt rating. And the Hometer has instructions for achieving golden toast. And the Hometer is almost as powerful as a Cuisinart and it's almost as fast at 2 minutes and 6 seconds. And it's done by far the best job yet at toasting both sides of the bread to the same level of darkness. It's also done the best job yet at darkening each side evenly. And the Hometer toast lost 19.7% of its weight. Also at a price of around $30 is this Mueller brand. It's a retro style toaster. It'll let you toast either one or two slices at a time. You can cancel, defrost, or even reheat your toast. Compared to the other brands, the toaster slots look pretty narrow. 
And the Mueller is rated for 700 watts. And the Mueller is very light at 982 grams. And the Mueller is only rated for 700 watts, and it's the least powerful toaster yet at 720. And it took two minutes and 19 seconds to finish the job. And the Mueller really struggled in this test with one side of the toast really dark and the other side not quite dark enough. Also, the Mueller was very inconsistent at darkening with the top of the toast quite a bit darker than the sides and bottom. And the Mueller toast lost 18.3% of its weight. At a price of around $33 is this Elite Gourmet brand. This is an extremely popular toaster with about 20,000 in sales every month. Retractable warming rack for warming pastries, croissants, buns, rolls, pitas, and more. It has extra wide slots for bagels and waffles. The other toasters are designed for two pieces of toast. The Elite Gourmet is designed for four. It's supposed to deliver up to 1,300 watts. The Elite Gourmet is made in China, and the Elite Gourmet weighs 1,922 grams. And the Elite Gourmet is the most powerful toaster yet at 1,335 watts. The slots on the Elite Gourmet are very long. After several attempts, I finally placed the toast near the center of the slots to achieve the most uniform outcome possible. And the Elite Gourmet is finished in 2 minutes and 29 seconds. Both sides of the toast experience the same level of toasting. However, the left and the right sides of the toast are over-toasted and the center is under-toasted. I made several attempts to achieve a more uniform pattern and the results were the same. And the bread lost 21.7% of its weight. At a price of around $36 is this Hamilton Beach brand. It's designed to toast the cut side of the bagel and warms the outside for a great bagel eating experience. Extra wide toasting slots. Designed to easily retrieve smaller pieces of bread. The Hamilton Beach is made in China. It's rated for 750 watts. And the Hamilton Beach weighs 1,122 grams. And the Hamilton Beach is more powerful than its 750 watt rating at 770. And the Hamilton Beach delivers a lot less heat than many of the other brands and it took the most time yet at 2 minutes and 41 seconds. Seconds. And both sides of the toast look pretty much the same. The top of the bread is over toasted and the bottom is under. And the Hamilton Beach toast is down 20.2% of its weight. At a price of around $39 is this General Electric brand. Accommodates breads, pastries, waffles, and bagels. Inch and a half extra wide toaster slots. Seven different shade settings. It's rated for 850 watts. The GE is made in China. And it's 1,334 grams for the GE. And the GE is around 880 watts or about 30 watts better than its rating. And the GE made pretty quick work of the toast at 2 minutes and 3 seconds, the same as a Cuisinart. And the GE has done the best job so far at toasting both sides of the toast evenly. It's also done the best job so far at toasting each side at a consistent shade. And the GE toast lost 18.1% of its weight. At a price of around $40 is this Keenstone brand. Has six different shade settings. It claims to be made from the highest quality 18-8 stainless steel. Two extra wide toaster slots that are inch and a half each. It has a metal cool touch housing. It has bagel defrost and cancel functions. The toaster is rated for 800 watts. Made in China. And the Keenstone weighs 1,276 grams. And the Keenstone is rated for 800 watts and it did better than its rating at 845. The toaster came with a chart for setting up the toaster for golden toast. Following the setup instructions, the Keenstone took the most amount of time yet at just over three minutes. And both sides of the toast look to have experienced about the same amount of heat exposure. However, some areas on each side of the toast appear a little over-toasted, while other areas look a little under-toasted. The Keenstone Toast lost 21% of its weight. At a price of around $50 is this Sedim brand. It's a stainless steel toaster with an LCD display and touch buttons. It claims to offer 50% faster heating speed, 6 bread selections, and 7 shade settings. It's rated for 1,350 watts. It claims to make delicious bread that is not too dry but full of burnt flavor. The Sedim Sedim is made in China, and the Sedim weighs 1,406 grams. And the Sedim is rated for 1,350 watts, but it came up a little bit short at around 1,315. The Sedim is set up for white bread with a golden finish. The Sedim makes by far the most heat, and it also works the fastest at only a minute and 15 seconds. The Sedim over-toasted the bread pretty badly in some areas while under-toasting it in others. Looking at both sides of the toast, the results are very inconsistent. And the Sedim toast is only down 10.6% of its weight, the least amount yet. I tried the next darker setting and that added about an extra 10 seconds of time to the toasting cycle. Unfortunately, both sides of the bread are now toasted quite a bit darker than golden. Unfortunately, there's no way to make minor adjustments to the Sedim. The toast on the left took a minute and 15 seconds and the toast on the right took a minute and 25. At a price of around $100 is this KitchenAid brand. It's a two-slot toaster with a high lift lever. It's supposed to have seven different shade settings in extra wide 1.5 inch slots. It includes bagel, defrost, reheat, and keep warm modes. The KitchenAid is rated for 1200 watts. Made in China. And the KitchenAid is the heaviest yet at 2044 
grams. And a KitchenAid is almost as powerful as a Sedim at 1,225 watts or 25 watts above its rating. And a KitchenAid delivers a lot more heat than most of the other brands, and it's almost as fast as a Sedim at 88 seconds. And both sides of the toast seem to have darkened about the same amount. The KitchenAid also did a pretty good job of toasting evenly, but the bottom area of the toast is a little underdone. And the KitchenAid toast only lost 12.8% of its weight. At a price of $220 is this Smeg brand. It's equipped with two generously sized slots, six different browning levels to achieve perfect shade. It has self-centering racks to ensure uniform browning. It also has a removable stainless steel crumb tray. The Smeg is designed in Italy and made in China. It's rated for 980 watts. And the Smeg weighs even more than the KitchenAid at 2,390 grams. And the Smeg performed better than its 980 watt rating by a little at 990 watts. And this Meg is only the third toaster to finish the job in under two minutes. And this toaster has done by far the best job so far at toasting both sides of the toast evenly. And this Meg toast has lost 17.1% of its weight. And the most expensive toaster we'll be testing at a price of $330 is made by Revolution. It has three different toasting modes, seven different shading modes, and options for fresh and frozen foods. They claim that their six preset bread type algorithms expertly toast a wide range of foods, fast, consistent, and toasting every time. They claim that it sears bread without dry it out so it's crunchy on the outside yet soft and delicious on the inside it has patented instant glow technology it even includes a panini press it's rated for 1440 watts the revolution is made in china and the revolution's even heavier than this mag at 2572 grams and the revolution is the most powerful toaster in the lineup at 1380 watts or about 70 watts less than its rating the toaster is set up for golden toast the Revolution puts out a lot of heat and it finished the job in just over a minute and a half. And the Revolution toasted both sides of the bread about the same. However, it didn't toast the bread as evenly as a smeg. And the Revolution's bread only lost 13.8% of its weight. Measuring weight loss or moisture loss from the toast is definitely not a perfect test since toaster setup has a huge impact on the results. However, the more powerful toasters did a better job at creating a golden texture while also maintaining a moist center. Assessing performance is also highly subjective. However, the Smeg came out on top for toasting both sides of the toast most equally of all the brands with the best possible rating of one. However, the Hometer, GE, KitchenAid, and Revolution also performed very well with the rating of 1.5. And this Meg also came in on top for offering the most even golden color from top to bottom and side to side. Let's see how the toasters perform at defrosting and then toasting frozen bread. I'll be using the same bread that we used in the first test. I'll keep the frozen bread in the freezer until testing begins for each toaster. And the Bella does not have a defrost function. So I'll adjust the timer from level 3 to level 3.5. And the timer adjustment added about 8 seconds to the toasting cycle. This is the bread that was not frozen from the first test. I didn't add quite enough time to the toasting cycle and the Bella looks a little under toasted on the the bottom and the other side is a little over toasted in some areas fortunately the center of the toast is warm and the proctor silex does not have a defrost setting so i'll adjust the control knob from 4 to 4.5 and the bread was toasted for an extra 15 seconds compared to the unfrozen toast from the first test the frozen toast came out a little bit more inconsistent it's over toasted in some areas and under toasted in others and the black and decker does have a defrost mode the instructions indicate to leave the toaster dial setting alone and to select the defrost mode the purpose of the defrost button is so that the user doesn't have to adjust the timer back and forth for frozen and unfrozen items. And the frozen bread was toasted for an extra 16 seconds, which seems like the right amount for this toaster. However, the Black & Decker delivered a little bit less consistent finish this time. And the Amazon Basics defrost setting added about 30 seconds to the toasting cycle. Amazon Basics is pretty inconsistent on unfrozen bread. Once again, the Amazon Basics is still inconsistent, but this time it's over toasted. And 30 seconds is just way too much time. And the defrost setting on the Cuisinart added about 8 seconds to the toasting cycle. And the Cuisinart toast is a little bit darker this time from the extra heat exposure and the center of the toast is warm. The Mueller has a defrost button, but it doesn't illuminate to let you know it's been activated. And the Mueller toasted the bread for an extra six seconds. The frozen toasted bread looks about the same as the unfrozen, and the finish is pretty inconsistent both times. And the Hometer's defrost mode adds 29 seconds to the toasting cycle. Unfortunately, 29 seconds is just way too much time, and the toast came out quite a bit darker compared to the unfrozen bread that was toasted in the first test. And the Elite Gourmet's defrost mode added 16 seconds to the toasting cycle. And the extra 16 seconds seems about the right amount of time, but the bread is still over toasted on the left and right sides of the toast. And the Hamilton Beach defrost mode added 30 seconds to the toasting cycle, which is 
proven to be overkill for the Amazon Basics and the Hometer. And the Hamilton Beach continues to struggle at delivering a consistent finish. Definitely way over toasted on top. And the GE's defrost setting added an extra 65 seconds to the toasting cycle, which seems way too ambitious for a defrost cycle. And the GE did indeed burn the toast pretty badly. And the defrost mode on the Keenstone added 23 seconds to the process. And 23 seconds is definitely a little too long, but definitely better than the GE. And the toast is way too dark in most areas. And the Sedin makes over 1400 watts of heat, which is practically blow torching the bread. So it would seem like five to 10 seconds would be plenty of time. However, the Sedim's defrost setting adds 30 seconds to the cycle and just about lit the bread on fire. As my uncle Roy would say, that toast will put some hair on your chest, young man. And the KitchenAid has plenty of experience with small appliances and their defrost cycle adds 10 seconds to the toasting cycle. And 10 seconds seems like just about the perfect amount of time and both sides of the toast came out looking pretty good. And the Smeg added 14 seconds to the toasting cycle, which seems to be a pretty good target time. Just like the KitchenAid, the Smeg toast came out looking very good. And the Revolution only added 10 seconds to the toasting cycle for the frozen bread. Unfortunately, the toast came out a little underfinished compared to the golden finish we were aiming to achieve. I once again toasted some frozen bread using level 5 and achieved a little bit better finish, but still not golden. The purpose of this test was to compare the effectiveness of the defrost mode without having to fiddle with the control knob or timer. This is another subjective assessment, and the KitchenAid and Smeg came out on top with the best possible rating of 1. The Cuisinart also performed very well with the rating of 2. I've gotten burned many times trying to retrieve a smaller size toast. So I'll use a Pop-Tart to compare how the toasters perform at lifting smaller items at the end of the toasting cycle. Together, the Pop-Tarts weigh about 111 grams. And the Bella spring for lifting bread and toast is pretty weak. And the toast is about 7 sixteenths of an inch below the top. If you lift the toaster lever, about a half inch of the Pop-Tart is above the toaster. And the Proctor Silex did a little bit better than the Bella at 3 eighths of an inch below the top of the toaster. With some assistance, the Pop-Tart is now 3 eighths of an inch above the surface. And the Black & Decker has done the best so far, but there's still a problem with the Pop-Tart about a quarter inch below the top. Lifting the lever, the Pop-Tart is about a quarter inch above the top. And the Amazon Basics didn't have quite the strength to lift the Pop-Tarts above the top, about 7 sixteenths of an inch too low. With some assistance, the Amazon Basics offers the most lift yet at about a full inch above the top. And the Cuisinart has the best lift yet, breaking even with the top of the toaster. Lifting the lever, the Pop-Tart is now about an inch above the toaster slot. And the Hometer really struggled in this test with the Pop-Tart about an inch below the top of the toaster slot. Lifting the lever to the top of the toaster, the Pop-Tart is sticking out about a half inch. And the Mueller performed the best yet, lifting the toast about a half inch above the toaster slot without any assistance. And that's as high as the Pop-Tart's going to go, even with assistance. And the Elite Gourmet has plenty of strength, and the Pop-Tart is about an inch above the toaster slot. And the Hamilton Beach left the Pop-Tarts about three quarters of an inch below the top of the toaster slot. Even with assistance, it's only about a quarter inch above the toaster slot. And the GE struggled just as badly as the Hamilton Beach at three quarters of an inch below the top of the toaster slot. However, with some assistance, the Pop-Tart is sticking out about three quarters of an inch. Just like the GE, the Keystone Pop-Tart is three quarters of an inch below the top of the toaster. With a little help, the Pop-Tart is now five eighths of an inch above the toaster slot. And the Sedim is definitely not well designed for smaller items at an inch and a quarter below the top of the toaster slot. Slot. Lifting the lever to the top of the toaster and the Pop-Tart is just about even with the toaster slot. And the Pop-Tart remained buried about 7 sixteenths of an inch. Helping the KitchenAid just a little, it's above the toaster slot by 7 sixteenths of an inch. And this Meg has plenty of spring strength to lift the Pop-Tarts, but it could use a little more range at only a quarter inch above the toaster slot. With a little assistance, it made it to 7 sixteenths of an inch. And the Revolution is definitely well designed for smaller items. The Pop-Tart started out at 7 eighths of an inch above the toaster slot and it finished at 7 eighths of an inch without any assistance. Without assisting the toaster, the Elite Gourmet did the best job at lifting the Pop-Tart, allowing it to stick out by about an inch. I've left the heat setting alone. So let's see how the toasters perform with just one piece of bread in the toaster. And the Bella is way over toasted on one side and inconsistent on the other. Just like the Bella, the Proctor Silex burned the bread badly on one side and the other side is mostly golden. And the Black & Decker did by far the best yet. While both sides are a little over toasted, one side is a little less dark than the other. And the Amazon Basics struggled just as badly as the Bella and the Proctor Silex. Just like the Amazon Basics, things did not go well for the Cuisinart with one side quite a bit darker than the other. And the Mueller's bread is mostly golden on one side and burned on the other. And the Hometer bread is mostly over toasted on one side and slightly over toasted on the other. And the Elite Gourmet continues to burn the left and the right side of the toast while under toasting the center. And the Hamilton Beach burned one side and the other side experienced far less heat. And the GE is mostly golden on one side and burned on the other. And the Keenstone over toasted the bread on one side and the other side experienced far less heat. And the Sedim mostly over
over toasted one side and areas on the other side are mostly under toasted. And the KitchenAid has done the best so far with one side just a little over toasted and the other side unevenly toasted but much better. While both sides of this Meg are over toasted, one side is over toasted quite a bit more than the other. And the Revolution has done by far the best job yet at toasting both sides evenly. Let's compare the performance of toasting bagels next. Most of the toasters call for placing the cut side of the bagel towards the center of the toaster. I'm having to lift the lever to elevate the bagels for removal. And the bagel toasted by the Bella varies by quite a bit in color. However, the Bella did a great job of warming up the center of the bagel. And the Proctor Silex had plenty of strength to lift the bagel for removal. Compared to the Bella, the Proctor Silex did a much better job of toasting the bagel evenly. And the Black & Decker lifted the bagel just high enough. And the Black & Decker didn't perform quite as well as the Proctor Silex. And the Amazon Basics did a great job of lifting the bagels above the toaster slots. However, the Amazon Basics bagels are a little over toasted in some areas and under toasted in others. And the Cuisinart has plenty of strength to lift the bagels. However, the Cuisinart over toasted some areas while under toasting others. I'm still hungry so I need to make this bagel fit inside the Mueller. And the Mueller wasn't able to lift the bagels without some help. The toaster performed about the same as the Amazon Basics with some areas over toasted and other areas under toasted. And the Hometer wasn't able to lift the bagels without some extra assistance. The bagels are a little dark in some areas and light in others. And the Elite Gourmet didn't perform quite as well as the Hometer with some areas of the bagel over toasted and others barely toasted at all. And the Hamilton Beach has plenty of strength to lift the bagels. However, some areas of the bagel are over toasted and other areas barely toasted at all. And the GE does not have enough strength to lift the bagels. However, the GE did perform a little bit better than the Elite Gourmet in Hamilton Beach with a little more consistent finish. And the Keystone doesn't have enough brawn to lift the bagels. However, the Keystone delivered a little more consistent finish than the GE. Unlike the other brands, the Sedim instructions indicate that the cut side of the bagel is to face outward. The Sedim is set up for a bagel toasted to a golden brown finish. And the Sedim didn't have enough strength to lift the bagel. Unfortunately, the bagel is way under toasted in most areas of the bagel. And the KitchenAid is going to need some aid lifting the bagels when the toasting cycle is finished. And the KitchenAid bagel is over toasted on top and under toasted on the bottom. Just like the Sedim, the Smeg instructions indicate facing the cut side outward for the bagels. And the Smeg has more than enough strength to lift the bagel at the end of the toasting cycle. While not a perfect job, the Smeg performed better than most of the other brands. And the Revolution is all set up to toast the bagel to a golden finish. And the Revolution has more than enough strength to lift the bagel. And one side of the bagel looks fairly nice, but the other side looks under toasted in some areas. Comparing toaster performance using bagels is a little more challenging since bagel shapes can vary quite a bit more than sliced bread. Assessing performance is highly subjective, but the Smeg came out on top with the best rating of 1.5. Proctor Silex also performed well with the rating of 2 and Keenstone 2.5. Only about half the toasters have enough strength to lift the bagels after the toasting cycle is finished. Let's see how well the toasters perform at catching falling breadcrumbs. I'll only use 5 grams of crumbs. And the crumb tray is still in place on the Bella, but the Bella laid quite a few crumbs. And the Proctor Silex performed quite a bit better than the Bella with just a few crumbs falling through the cracks. Unfortunately, the Black & Decker really struggled in this test and it seems well designed for feeding those cockroaches. Looking down through the top of the Amazon Basics and there's quite a few opportunities for crumbs to fall through. And the Amazon Basics left a lot of crumbs behind. And the Cuisinart isn't perfect, but it's quite a bit better than the Black & Decker and the Amazon Basics. And the Mueller seems to be losing about half the breadcrumbs. This thing is quite the mess maker. And the Hometer performed quite a bit better than the Mueller, but not quite as well as the Proctor Silex. And the Elite Gourmet has quite the size advantage, but that really didn't help too much. It didn't perform quite as well as the Hometer. And the Hamilton Beach really struggled on this test. Also, there's no easy way to remove the breadcrumbs without making a huge mess. And the GE lost quite a few breadcrumbs, but not quite as bad as the Mueller. And the Keenstone pretty much toss crumbs everywhere. And the Sedim performed quite a bit better than the Keenstone, but there are a few crumbs on the paper towel. And the KitchenAid performed quite a bit better than average, but not quite as well as the Sedim. And the Smeg performed about the same as the KitchenAid. And the Revolution definitely performed quite a bit better than average. None of the toasters did a perfect job at crumb collection, but the Proctor Silex, Cuisinart, Sedim, and Revolution performed the best with the rating of 2. And many of the brands advertise having 1.5 inch wide toaster slots. I measured the actual width of the bread carriage assembly and only a few brands can handle an item that's 1.5 inches in width. Bread length may also be a factor and the Elite Gourmet slots are almost 10 inches in length. The Smeg is at 5.8 inches and KitchenAid 5.7. If you're attempting to toast a large diameter item, some toasters offer much more capacity. And the KitchenAid has a slot depth of very close to 6 inches in the fully seated position. So which toaster is best? I've converted raw performance into an A through F grading scale to make the results more meaningful. 
In the past, I've had pretty good success finding a decent budget item, but this time I can't recommend any of the toasters in the $20 to $30 price range. However, for a price of around $39, the GE toaster seems reasonably priced considering its performance. The GE is able to toast unfrozen white bread efficiently without drying out the center of the toast. For heavier items such as bagels and pop-tarts, the toaster carriage spring is too weak to lift the item at the end of the toasting cycle. So the toaster will need a hand. Just like a lot of the other toasters, the GE struggled at retaining crumbs. While the KitchenAid is a bit of an investment at around $100, it performs significantly better than the less expensive toasters in most categories. Just like the GE, it's a more powerful toaster that requires less time to toast an item, which results in less moisture loss in the center of the item. Just like the GE, it struggled at lifting heavier items at the end of the toasting cycle. If it's all about performance, the Smeg is a very expensive toaster, but it performs exceptionally well in most categories. The Revolution also performed very well in most categories, but $330 seems pretty expensive for a toaster. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.